Have you ever watched a rom-com where the protagonists actively go out of their way to make you mad? Like, the gorgeous best friend miraculously never knows how to read social cues, miscommunications that could have easily been resolved haunt us for the most part of the film. Absolutely everything goes to shit while you sit there and wonder why the protagonist couldn't have gotten out of their comfort zone. In which case, you realize that just like the main character, you haven't made an effort to be honest with your crush or anyone for the matter, and just to add some salt into the wound, you're not a category A nerd with abs. You're just a nerd with no abs. So what are some ways to get out of your comfort zone? The first way circles back to good old mice. In 1907, psychologist Robert Yerkes and his buddy John Dodson suggested that anxiety affects performance. To test this theory, they put mice in mazes from which they were inclined to escape. To spice it up a little bit, they electrocuted the mice. They found that the mice's determination increased as they intensified the electricity. However, it only lasted to a point. After that, the mice were more inclined to flee or freeze rather than face the challenge, presenting the yerkes dodson law. Let's get a graph. Not enough risk and the subject gets bored. Too much risk, the challenge becomes more of a distraction than an incentive. What we're trying to do is get to that sweet spot. Think about it this way. Hypothetically, you're filming a dreary gay film at the church. You find a peaceful nook, but you only have 30 minutes before the pastor comes. This amount of pressure would incentivize you to finish the goddamn project. However, if this project took place back when the pastor was young, aka World War II, and he and his crush, a very closeted Hitler, were to search the church in 30 minutes, it would be unsurprising that the quality would decrease. The rule is that if a project bores you, pressure yourself. This can mean working in an uncomfortable position, such as standing, preferably with your grandma's massage shoes. Those hurt. If a project intimidates you, split the process in half. So if you're planning to get into a boxing match with John Cena and The Rock, maybe just stick to John Cena. The following story brings us to an elephant trainer in a circus. When choosing the ropes, one may believe the thickness of the rope should mirror the growth of the elephant. However, the elephant trainer believes otherwise. You see, the thin rope is strong enough to hold a young elephant. The futile attempts to break free while they are young condition them to believe the rope will still contain them regardless of their size. So, how many unbreakable metal chains you thought bound you turned out to be mere strings of rainbow looms? Success leads to confidence which leads to taking action, which leads back to success. There are three steps to the equation, but only one is within your control taking action. The next method is to compare yourself to people who are worse than you. Whoa, controversial, but hear me out. Our brains consist of two systems, the logical conscious systems that allow us to make rational judgments and the non-conscious system, which is reactionary and involuntary. Judging is the part of the non-conscious system. Let's test this out. Without making any conclusions, look at this person. Chances are, one of the first conclusions a person would draw based on the picture is that the person is gay. You can look at it as long as you want, and it would be impossible for you to see a straight person. In the moment, our subconscious system takes over, making looking at the drag queen without coming to the conclusion that they are queer impossible. With this in mind, it is also impossible not to make judgments about people. We may not say it out loud, but watching Tammy Slayton repeatedly fail to meet her diet requirements reminds us that we really aren't as bad as we think. So, in an age where our perception of ourselves relies heavily on social media, a medium where anyone can market anything as a truth, the way we perceive ourselves has been warped to deranged extremes. Like, in what universe are rubber boobs and butts the standard of beauty? Apparently, it's our society. We compare ourselves so much to the point that even the knowledge that social media is fake can't stop the subconscious mind from making conclusions that are simply untrue. A leaked Facebook presentation reveals that Instagram is responsible for 13% of suicidal thoughts amongst UK teens and 6% amongst American teens. I want to make a wild guess that every teen has probably seen a PSA about social media being fake before. I mean, come on. Everyone knows that photos can be edited. But when you see K-pop idols or the models on TikTok with their skinny little waist and lives sorted out before 20, it's hard to just point them out as liars because, other than the exposés here and there, there really is no way to tell. So, 
how can we develop our self-image in a constructive way? In the same way, only watching news from either the left or right-leaning news outlets lead us to lies muddled with bias. Only seeing the highlights of other people's lives lead us on to believe that we're behind on everything. The first step in making changes in your life starts with the realization that you are smart, resilient, and creative enough to reach happiness. In conclusion, watching people struggle for their lives is therapeutic. Wow, finally got to the end of the video. This is a sign that your white shoes will stay white. That's all for today. Bye guys.